This is a special edition broadcast from the Irish Roots Cafe. Today we have another very special interview we've done with the Everyday Irish, and it all happens at the Browns Irish Festival. Browns happens to be the oldest Irish-run business in uh, North America, Heck, and I think it's South America and maybe even the world. They're still uh, waiting for final judgment on that, but I know of no one older and uh, better to go find what the Irish heritage was like generations back. So we've got a series of 10 interviews developed that we took at the uh, uh, last year's festival, and we hope you enjoy it. And it's going to include the Irish, the non-Irish, and the kings and paupers and thieves and just the whole lot, the whole range of the Irish. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it coming to you from the Irish Roots Cafe at www.irishroots.com. And I'm Michael Laughlin. Here's today's interview. You'll have to bring out leading questions. Hi. Okay, we're here at the... Uh, 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 Brown's Irish Festival, and it, the, the days the sun's starting to set and the loud bands are starting to come out, and I was talking to the Murphys here, and uh, all of a sudden they said they'd introduce me to Father Quinn, and he might know something about the neighborhood and uh, what Brown's was like and what the neighborhood around Brown's was like, and uh, uh, Father, could you help us out? Well, I'll say what comes to my mind here without too much prodding. Brown's Grocery Store was probably the only grocery store I'd been in up to the age of 14. It was a good place to steal Fig Newtons because Mr. Brown wasn't too watchful. And um, I think our parents took enough trade there to kind of balance it out. The neighborhood was wonderful. I was raised in the 3400 block of Pennsylvania where my dad moved in in 1916 and uh, went to Redemptor School. And uh, I've been gone for 58 years and I came back here two years ago and uh, very glad to be here and renew old friendships and even um, Forge some new ones. Well, what are the, what kind of changes have you seen since you were uh, uh, since you, you were young here, and now it's been 58 years later? What 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 have you seen changes neighborhood-wise or cultural or wise? The main change I see is from residential to otherwise. I'm not sure just what the otherwise is. There are business buildings or uh, office buildings where there used to be residences. There are parking lots where there used to be residences. So the population density has gone down greatly, and um, the addition of Penn Valley Junior College has had a great impact on the area, for the good, probably, but uh, it's much different. That's one of the significant differences. Well, what about the uh, inside the store itself when you used to go in there? Uh, was it a store? Was it a deli? Uh, what, what was the atmosphere like? It, it was like? not a deli at all. It was a strictly a neighborhood grocery store, uh, canned goods, butcher sh counter, uh, fresh fruit and vegetables, things like that, cereal, bread, just a plain neighborhood grocery store. You know they're the oldest continuously owned Irish operated uh, business in North America? I did not know that, but I have no doubt believing it because Mr. Brown, J.R. Brown Jr., the best in town, was driving the streetcar the first time my mother ever drove the street, rode on a streetcar, when, and she was born in 1908. So and, he, that, and he was driving the streetcar. The streetcar driver. The first time my mother was on a streetcar. Well, now, how, and then how's that relate to the Browns market? Mr. James R. Brown Jr. was the, I believe, the grandfather of Carrie Brown, who now is the, with her husband owns the Browns uh, Deli or Browns Gift Shop, etc. Right. Okay, yeah. It, it's a continuous chain that binds it to the neighborhood and to a, a lot of people in great affection. Well, when you went in there and you used to get those Fig Newtons, did people just stand around and talk, or did they run through the cash register? What was the atmosphere? As I recall, they ran through. They paid their bills and ran home. Hey, do you remember some of the Irish names in the neighborhood from back then? Any names come to mind, the surnames? Well, all right, starting on the corner of the uh, 34th in Pennsylvania, there were two families of Quinns south of us, and then between them was Coffee Greens. Chief Coffee had been chief of police of Kansas City, Missouri. That irritated me because he always got the same license number every year on his car. Next to him was Murphy's, then Sweeney's and Dolan's, then our house. Next to us were the Donahue's. Next to them were Dempsey's, and that was a little beyond. Once I got beyond them, that was uh, about as far as my mother let me go. So this was really an old-fashioned Irish neighborhood to start out with. Very much so, very much so. And, you know, what do you think that meant? It meant that uh, 
about 9.20, everybody walked off their porch to go to the 9.30 mass. I think there were only two privately owned automobiles on our block. Uh, it meant a lot of uh, neighborhood cohesion, a lot of uh, mutual support. I re realized that the first time I came out on the front porch, anybody who could see me knew my name. So there were very few strangers around. Well, hey, that's really interesting. I wonder, uh, did you keep in contact with many of those old family names? Do you see them today yet? Some yes, some no. Most no from the, from the block and from the immediate neighborhood, not many. From grade school at Redemptress, I stay in touch with many of my first grade classmates. In fact, this coming Tuesday, I'll officiate at the funeral of Mrs. Helen Shadow, who would have been 103 had she made it to this September. She and my mother were good friends, and she was the mother of one of my best friends in grade school, Joe Shadow, who has since died. Hey, do you know where your uh, line of the Quins would come from? Yes, Grandfather Quinn came from uh, the province of Arama. He got here with three of his brothers in New York about 1880. Their sister Mary stayed in Manhattan, and the four boys came here. One became a boot maker. One became a saloon keeper. My grandfather Edward became a police officer, retired in, prior to 1917 when we moved from 13th and Montgall to 34th and Pennsylvania. And um, that's... Uh, Did you have any other Irish lines in your family? Well, his wife was from Ireland, uh, Ann Walsh, so we were Irish on both sides. And my mother was a Moriarty before she married my father. My mother went to Redemptress High School, my father went to Redemptress Grade School, and then finished up at De La Salle Grade School and High School. So uh, we belong very strongly to the neighborhood and to the area. Now, would that Walsh family been related to, uh, like, Ed Walsh today? I know on Ed Walsh and, uh, gosh. Uh, no, they were from Lansing, Kansas. In fact, my grandmother, when she went into school for the first time in kindergarten or first grade, they were all speaking German, so she grew up bilingual. They were the only Irish family near Lansing, Kansas. Hey, now that's moved down here. That's a real interesting piece of history yeah. too. So we got more than we bargained for today. Well, my batteries are starting to get low. Turn it off. Do you Turn have give off. us one last comment on what you think uh, Brown stands for in the community today? Continuity, generosity, and uh, ethnic pride. Can't say it any better than that. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Well, that's the end of today's interview with the Everyday Irish here at Brown's Irish Festival. Each year they have an anniversary party, and each year it gets better. And we've got a series of interviews trying to show the history of the Irish, uh, maybe just like it was in your town, but see what you listen to and what you like and uh, come back for more. We've got several more uh, uh, interviews coming up, so uh, stay tuned for those. Thanks. This is Mike at www.irishroots.com at the Irish Roots Cafe.